thing that I really like about the grub hoe in general is that you can sort of customize the way you use it depending on the conditions of the soil and what you're trying to do. So like these, this bed, you know, this is, it's overgrown, but it's not crazy overgrown. But the weeds are too big for a hula hoe. And depending on how you angle the tool, you can both scrape the top layer of soil, cutting out or pulling out the weeds, as I'm doing here, or you can give the tool a little bit bigger of a swing and drive it all the way in the ground and then pull and lift. Now, if I'm just strictly trying to weed, I tend to do the first one where I'm just scraping off the top. I think that it kills the, the weeds and grass better and I also think that um, it's easier on the body because I'm just doing less swinging. However, if I really want to loosen the soil more deeply or if I almost want to look at the tool like a tiller where I'm trying to mix in all this weeds and grass, then I can hit the tool in deeper and pull it up. But one reason that it's more tiring is because it pulls up a clump like this. And if I don't chop that up, it's going to regrow. So I try to flip them over so the grass, the green is down and the roots are up. And they kind of tend to flip almost any way when you do it that way. And so that's another way you can clear away crop residue or work in a cover crop or even work in amendments you know it's a lot faster than using a garden fork to try to work in and you know remember to switch sides i try to think of this sort of work as exercise as a workout you know and so remember to work both sides switch your left and your right hand I'm really one-sided, I'm really right-hand dominant, so I can usually only go for a little while when I put my left hand down, but you'll get stronger in a more balanced way and you'll probably have more endurance because you're using different muscles. The other tip that I've found is that it's really nice to lead with the corner of the tool. So what I mean is that the, the actual corner of the tool can be the very first part of the tool that enters the soil. And that's just gonna help you get that initial bite a lot easier than if you leave the tool fully, you know, flat, perpendicular to the soil. Then you have all that blade to try to get in. But if you sort of just tilt it, just cant it ever so slightly. Um, I always tilt it toward my body. So to the right, if I'm facing this way, and I tilt it to the left if I'm facing this way. And that, that corner just gives you it's like concentrating the power of the swing on that one point. And if you're paying attention, when it's possible, you can really see where the weed or the grass originates from. You know, like if it's a little clump grass or a little, a little wild lettuce like that was, you can place that corner right where you need it. And so kind of all these little hacks just help you to go longer and to enjoy it more while you're doing it. Now, a lot, a lot of times I think we find ourselves sprinting when it comes to the garden, at least I do. You know, when it's time to plant, it's time to plant. You know, when it's time to harvest, it's really time to harvest. And frost is coming, we gotta hustle. But if you can pace yourself with your hand tool work, you know, do a bed at a time, um, and not try to do it all in an afternoon. I'll show you the, the deeper technique here.
So here again is the scalping, scraping approach where the tool is not going too far into the ground and my angle is a little more perpendicular to the ground. And then here is the more chopping approach where I'm using a little more power, I'm lifting the tool up higher and I'm driving the tool in at a steeper angle. And as you can see, it loosens the soil to a greater depth, but it, I think it requires more effort on all fronts because I'm having to chop up the clumps that I bring up. And the other thing I wanted to mention about this one is that it's generally best to work your way forward. Well, that way you're sort of taking a fresh bite a couple inches at a time and the prepared ground is behind you. And remember to take breaks and to sharpen your hoe often. <laughs>